However, when he was hung in 1730, the story goes, he threw his necklace with the cryptogram into the crowd and shouted, find my treasure, the one who may understand it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, <gasps> so, <laughs> the suspense. <laughs> Avasti mateys, welcome to the Mysterious Pals show. I should say, welcome aboard to the Mysterious Pals show. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to have you all aboard this journey today. But with me is my first mate, old Stinkbeard himself, Jordan. Stinkbeard. Welcome aboard. <laughs> That's a pretty cool pirate name. Yeah. Stinkbeard the pirate. Welcome aboard. We are going to go for a little... Uh, plunder. Is that what they say? How do they say when they're about to take a ship down? Plunder. We're going to plunder this ship tonight. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about something, someone that is, at his time, was supposed to be one of the most, uh, you know, richest pirates of his time. But I first want to ask you. Wait, we're doing Henry Avery again? So... This is after Henry Avery, okay. Avery. And of his time, this pirate we're talking about, he was supposedly one of the most one of the wealthiest because of how much he actually stole. But what I want to ask you first is that though this brings up a question that I thought of lots of times as as many people will. What would you do if you won the lottery tomorrow? Let's say you won that billion dollar jackpot or two billion, however much it was. What yeah, would you do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was the first thing you let's just say what was the first thing you do? Because me First thing I do. Are you asking me? Or you, can you just ask me? I'm going to ask you, but I want to give you a second to think. <laughs> okay. Unless you know. Well, you got this in the chamber. In the, in the, I mean, uh, in the cannon. In the old. Uh, guns do they have? The old poop deck. <laughs> the poop deck. <laughs> On the poop deck. I mean, student loans. Pay that right off. Yeah, but like, right? what's the. Okay. That's so boring. That, but like, well, yeah, but I mean, I'd definitely do that. But the fun thing would be. Ooh. You pay off all your debt. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's what's next? I don't know. You think That's why I was going to answer first. Not, oh, okay. Now I'm the dummy, well, dummy. Well, mean you guy. asked me, and then you just cut me off. <laughs> Go ahead. God, I hate this place. Uh, what <laughs> I would do friend. is build a bunch of mansions, like buy a bunch of property, build a bunch of mansions, what? all on call to sex for all my friends, and we yeah, all lived on the same what, street that's together. What I say, yeah. yeah, like I think Mr. Beast, that, but like we'll, I would do it way we'll, better. We'll call it the sack. Yeah, yeah, and we would like just destroy each other i'll pay you to fix it but we would just like <laughs> we would just like annihilate i would actually buy cannons and shoot them at each other's houses That'd yeah great yeah yeah i'm sure our wives Didn't and girlfriends also, wouldn't like uh, that very much bring up uh yeah buy them buy them all yeah i'd and like to buy them all in it. i think now malls are so cheap because they're so good <laughs> no one wants them anymore <laughs> i could probably buy that like you know yeah. a couple that years one near us that's that's uh, condemned that's, but like yeah. oh there's but a lot of them out there yeah that'd be great a lot of the malls around us are basically bankrupt but like there's so many of them around the united oh. states that like i would love to live in them all to make it my house it would be insanely expensive for like taxes and stuff and yeah. like to yeah, yeah. heat it and stuff but like there was an old school by me that was for sale like it was real old it was like 1900s and someone bought it like in, and they eventually tore it down to build like another thing mm -hmm. i think a vet veterinary office now but like originally someone bought it and was like gonna make it their house and then, like, eventually, I don't know, they when something happened. But anyway, that that's I, when I found out how much they bought it for, because it was like only hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, for for like a giant old school. So there's a a school, old school. I don't. It's old. I don't know when it was made, but it's recently been turned into a apartment complex. Yeah, I was like a picture. There's of it. there's one right, right on the street, street from us. Okay, there's one like out near where where I work, and it looks really cool on the inside. Yeah, but like I want. You can't I, open the windows for some reason, which is really weird. I don't know why. That'd be terrible. Well, but I mean, they probably have ancestral air. Yeah, but you can't open your own window? Yeah, I'm, ju I'm jumping out there. But you live there. <laughs> it's not a school anymore. I don't know. Anyways. It's too expensive. Yeah. And windows are expensive, but like. Yeah. I, I don't know. I think it would be, I would love, yes, I would want to buy a mall, but it'd be so expensive to upkeep. Yeah. But it would just be cool to live in a mall. But you're also talking about <laughs> buying a cul-de-sac and destroying each other's houses. That'd be really expensive. Yeah, 
You're right. That'd be much more fun, though. Yeah. Imagine every night just hanging on on the stoop yep. and the street with each other. Right. Yeah. Setting booby traps for each other when we come home from work. <laughs> 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 blow up your car. <laughs> wait, I'll get you. I'll get you uh, wait, one. What's today? Today I was supposed to blow up his car. <laughs> uh, you better not get in the car, anyways. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I will buy a new one. It's fine. I'd run out of money so fast. It'd be. I mean, most of those people like win the lottery. Always run out of money. Like they're all. Yeah. Like, most of them end up poor. Would you want to? That's the thing. I know it's like some states make you like, like you have to like, uh, I don't know what the right word or term for it is like, come forward. Yeah. Like, like you have to, there's some states that require you to be yeah. named. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be named. I don't know. I probably name it myself anyway. <laughs> well, yeah, hey, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Before, yeah. I'm loaded. I don't know. I don't know if our state is one that requires it, but um, yeah, that'd be a, that would be a hell of a thing. That'd be awesome. Just how much, I mean. Like, ah, oh man. Having as much money as you could ever need is crazy. Now, would you take the lump sum or do you do like that, the payments over like. The annuity. Yeah. I would probably take the lump sum. I don't know, maybe. Because it's, I know they're like, oh, you get more money, but like, will you? They, they want you to take the, the annuity because then they know they don't have to pay you that much. Yeah. It's like one of the things like, well, you put it in your kid's name, but they have to be 18 and then they can right. collect it for the rest of their lives. What if they're, you know. Plus, I mean, I would take based on what you want to do, you'd probably die Imagine prior just, to getting all the money. Yeah. Because so uh, they like, you know, party so charters, hard. Yeah. Blow each other's houses up. Yeah, it'd probably be bad. But you could also, if you get that much money, like we're talking about two, like that guy got like $2 billion. Yeah. I mean, with taxes and everything, he probably got a billion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But like, you could put that in the bank and live off the interest for the rest of your life if you really want to play that game. Yeah. Like, that's how much we're talking about here. You never have to ever want something. Like, I know a person who his parents invented something really stupid that's sold in every store in the world. And then they, this is not someone like we know. This no. is someone like I know <laughs> so, from a di- distant person, like, what? like a, a, an acquaintance. Why, we, why does this guy buy us a cul de sac? Anyway, it's like, it's like someone that someone knows, but like they, Parents invented something super dumb, super like if you can invent something that's super easy that like most people could use, you're gonna be a billionaire. Mm. But like this guy invented something that's like so dumb and you're just like, come on. <laughs> and he sold it. They sold it to a big company, his his business, and his his kid and his wife never have to do anything. Like they just always on vacation. I'd be awesome, bored, man. but like growing up like that would be crazy. I mean, I'd probably be pretty bored. <laughs> Like would me you, now, I'd be Do you think bored. you would still work? If I had a billion dollars? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think I could work. Could you imagine what, like, being able to get up in the morning and be like, I'm oh, going to work today. Like, if I have a billion dollars, I want to be able to get up and be like, I don't want to go to work today. I'll do whatever I want. Yeah. there would be at least a year where I would do nothing. Yeah. After a year, I'd be pretty bored. Right, yeah, that's the thing. But I, I, if you had a billion dollars, man, you could do whatever you want. Yeah, but I'd probably do everything. <laughs> And be done. Oh, I have to go to Tahiti again. Oh, I'm not man. one who likes to like oh, travel geez. a lot. Like I don't like planes. Hate planes. You just buy a private jet. Damn, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Mo money, mo I'm the, problems, I'm the, man. I'm the billionaire still sitting in the coach. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't wait. I could do what? <laughs> wait, wait a second. I gotta have my own plane. Yeah, that'd be great. I like the cul-de-sac thing, man. I think that's awesome. Yeah, that'd be better than buying a giant mansion and telling you guys to go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> my friends, I'm like, who? <laughs> be my butler and I'll pay you, like a, you know, a thousand bucks a week. That's not too bad. Yeah, but you're going to do some stuff. Yeah, that's the thing. Me. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to deal yeah, with me. Yeah, yeah. All right. Here we go. I, yeah, I, don't, oh, I don't know what I would do other than like paying off debt. But you could do I'd anything. Wanna, yeah, I'd want to buy like something really cool though. You're like, I bought a laptop. <laughs> it's like, that's a, whoa. I, I got a PS5. <laughs> yeah. My TV is like 80 inches. Hmm. I got a laser disc. I got a laser yeah. disc. Uh, I, I don't know. I, you, have to, you also have to do something really dumb. Like oh, hell yeah. buy a Chinook or something to like drop you off at like places. Like, <laughs> like make like a water slide that's like the best water slide in the entire world yeah. in your backyard. Or like buy a sweet like theme park. Eh. Then you gotta do the maintenance on that too. Yeah, I mean but you, you get the money people, to do it. Yeah, 
But then you have to you eventually have to start making money off that. That'd be yeah. kind of a dumb investment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you gotta do some. You gotta do something dumb, but you can't do something that's like you invest in something so dumb that like you're enti- like, <laughs> you, like you, crap. You ruin you know? yourself. Yeah. Like buying Twitter, maybe you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that went really well. Oh, but hey, we're on, we're on Twitter, so please, please support. <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's a bad joke. <laughs> He's gonna come for me. <laughs> we don't. I'm one that we likes, don't get anything from Twitter, anyways. Yeah, I, I'm one that likes that guy because he's so he's just like an eccentric billionaire. Like they would always, you have to be that insane to be rich. Yeah, you have to be insane to be one of the richest men in the world. I mean, you also have to be like a piece of garbage too to get that rich. But you exactly, you have to be insane. There's no yeah. one out there that's not like a business leader that's like that successful that's not insane. Right. Because you're so disconnected from how the world actually works. Yeah. But who cares? You get so much money. Who cares? Yeah, but you also do like some scummy things. Also, you, should, get that also you gotta shut your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. You want to be that rich, just shut up and go away. Because yeah, there's a time where everyone was like, oh, he's like, you know, he's like Tony Stark. He yeah. Was, he was even in he was in Iron Man too. Yeah. I mean he, he, he came is, in. People are like, oh, he's great. And now he's just like, do just stop talking, man. I think you just that's just the way of things. I mean, look at any eccentric billionaire. They always do that. Yeah. They always go crazy. But hey, he's still out there doing it, I guess. Whatever. Uh yeah. Did what's oh god, what's his name? Microsoft guy. Bill Gates. Bill Gates. He didn't go crazy. I mean he chipped us with the five G. <laughs> the what? <laughs> Never mind, man. Five G? Well, yeah, the whole remember like the five G thing, we're like, you're gonna get cancer for five G and Bill Gates wants to chip us and all this other stupid crap. Do you hear all right, never mind. Well, what videos have you been watching on YouTube? It's been on the news. That aren't ours. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I think Bill Gates uh, is pretty eccentric. He's just, he's good at hiding it. Just like he's smart enough. Sure, he's yeah. a smart dude. He's smart enough to hide it. Yeah, sh- he shuts his mouth, I guess. Yeah. Like there was a story that like he, oh, Bill, Bill still does, does still does his dishes. Shut up. He does like some philanthropy work. I mean, he, does, he's, he is he, one of the biggest philanthropists in yeah, the world. Yeah. And it's like, I guess he's not, he's giving money to his kids. Yeah. But not like all of it. Which he's I still like. making tons of money. Yeah. And they're still going to get a lot of money. But, so, I mean, but yeah. also, he's also one of the biggest fans. Bill yeah. and Linda Gates Foundation is huge. Yes. does a lot of crazy things. Yeah. You know. Lots of education. But I mean, Elon Musk gives money away too. Like, these guys still give money away because it's tax for <laughs> off. That's true too. Yeah. yeah, they save on money on taxes <laughs> when he gives it away. But anyway, we're going to go to someone that didn't give any money away. Also, uh, not an eccentric billionaire like we know them. Although... Watch tomorrow, you're going to go out and win the lottery and be like, man, we did it. Yeah. And never talk to you again. Yeah, the next podcast would be really weird. <laughs> yeah. I just never, never see you again. Never. Yeah. You're gone. I'm calling you from my private plane. I tell kids all the time when they graduate, I'm like, I hope you're successful. I hope you're super successful. And I hope one day I'm walking out the parking lot to my rusted out old truck and you just drive by and hit me with a, your car door and your Lamborghini as you fly by. and like, hey, what's up? So you can sue them? No. Oh, maybe. Maybe. So they could say, get a, hey, get a cut of that money. Look what I got, and you suck still. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, our mystery today revolves around a pirate. One of my favorite topics in this show is treasure hunts. Mm-hmm. And like our first episode on Henry Avery, this is another pirate who, in his career, um, he plundered many ships in the Indian Ocean. And in the Caribbean, obviously, a lot of ships, especially f- the ones from India, Persia, China, going between um, from the Caribbean to Europe, that type of stuff. It's estimated that he stole over a billion pounds in today's value Ooh. in his career. And it's, again, pirates that we always see, in, like in Henry Avery, pirates have a really short yeah. like lifespan or like career. Yeah. It's crazy. And this guy is not. He's the same thing. Um. He earned, because he's one of the most successful pirates, not as successful as Henry Avery, though. Okay. Henry Avery is still more successful, I guess, by value terms or something. Um, He, and also, Henry Avery was one of the first to do it. You know, he was was a lot, he was way, he was before this guy. He earned the the nickname, the buzzard or the laboose. Okay. Okay. Or the mouth, which is, translates to. Laboosh. Laboosh, yes. (laughs) For his speed and ruthlessness, and in I mean he he the numbers of ships that he on record has plundered, you know, was insane. And we're gonna go over that. I wonder uh, 
Le, 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 that band Labouche got their name from this pirate? The mouth. Like maybe, they, or maybe they just want to be called the mouth. Mouth, yeah. Yeah. Because it's French, right? Yeah. A bouche. <laughs> There's a one hit wonder type of band. What, we, I, I know they were like, I want to be 90s. your lover. Was yeah, it 90s? 90s, yeah. yeah. If you can have, if you ever give yourself your own pirate nickname, what would you give yourself? Because there's like, you know, like there's some cool ones out there like Calico Jack, Blackbeard. We're going to talk about a guy named uh, Edward England who's from like Spain or something. What? <laughs> He's a pirate <laughs> named Edward England. He's from like Portugal or something. Oh, that's interesting. All right. Yeah. Um, would, you call me, would you call me Stinky Beard? Stink Beard. <laughs> Stink Beard. I like that. I like uh, that. We have we have a friend of the show who was on our show named Bloodbeard the Pirate or yeah. Bloodbeard. Bloodbeard, yeah, yeah. Um, Deathlam. Yes, lead singer Deathlam. Bloodbeard. Oh man, that's a good one. I'm gonna th- I'm gonna roll around the old noodle here. No, nothing's really coming to me. All right. But this pirate that we're talking about today, some say he may have been the original Eye Patch Pirate. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think also, so. Also, <laughs> his biggest act of piracy, which we're going to talk about, uh, would have been, it is was used by Robert Louis Stevenson in his novel Treasure Island. All right. Yeah, so he's he's part of this. Like, he kind of uh, was a part of that story or, he, like, helped with that story. What's that called? Whenever you take reference from something else. Reference. Uh, like a writer takes reference for something else. He's like, this is going to be... Homage? I don't know. Yeah. Some word. Whatever. Didn't Treasure sucks. Island have something to do with Avery, too? Is that part of something like Avery? I don't really know that. Yeah. But... So we talked about it. It sounds like it. Okay. I think it was another book. All right. Yeah. Um. So there's a galleon referred to the Viceroy of the Indies in the account given uh, in by a famed fiction character, Long John Silver. Hmm. And it, this has to do with... Our pirates for right. today. Well, that's cool. So we're gonna ask, and we're gonna talk about where did Olivier Lavasseur hide his treasure? And I said that word correctly, and I have it typed out. With the word treasure phonetically. <laughs> the word treasure. I'm like treasure. <laughs> treasure. Where did he hide that treasures? <laughs> so our lovely friend pirate today. Olivier, who was French, who's born in Calais, France. Look that one up too. All right, all right. Uh, around 1688 to 1690. With these, this time apparently they just keep didn't keep good records. You're also ruining our whole like thing here, man. We're actually pronouncing things correctly. No, there's plenty of crap that's going to come up that's not <laughs> going right, to come okay, out right. All right, yeah. Enough. Uh, we're going to get to Brazil and they're like I'm like Brazil. <laughs> we're going to get we're going to get to a lot of different names here. There's a lot of weird stuff when it comes to. Not the weird stuff, but there's a lot of technical details about what he was doing. Okay. And they all revolve around different... He apparently was everywhere. He was just like around the world everywhere. So right. I'm going to be saying a lot of stuff wrong. I only got to start writing phonetically like the first half, and then I was like, crap, whatever. I ran out <laughs> I'm of time. over it. Yeah. Um, so again, he was born 1690, a Browns, to a wealthy bourgeois family. Mm-hmm. What the hell is that? The rich people. Bougie. Bougie. He became an architect. Whoa. Received excellent education because he was born in a wealthy family right. in France. He was not really, not a lot was known about him uh, until he uh, was a, became a privateer for the French crown during the War of Spanish Succession, 1701. Avery was a privateer too, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah, that was for the Nine Years' War. Yes. What, when, when was the Nine Years' War? Wait, which, which, so sorry, which uh, which one is he? Spanish approach? War of Succession, seventeen oh one. Okay, so he was seventeen oh one. He joined up seventeen oh one. I guess it wouldn't have been then because he was born in nineteen sixty nine. So he'd have been ten years old. <laughs> so at some point, they don't really have record when he joined. Yeah. But he was there as a privateer until the end of that war in seventeen fourteen. Good. So Basically, sometime yeah. before then, he joined up. But I think it's interesting the privateer thing because again with Avery, like you're basically a legalized pirate. You're working for a government like, hey, you see an enemy ship out there, feel free to destroy it, ransack it, whatever's on there is yours. What was the War of Succession, Spanish War of Succession? Uh, Spanish War of Succession was when Charles II of Spain died. 
he didn't have any sons or daughters or anything like that to become the new heir, but he named, I think it was like Louis XIV of France's, one of his relatives to be the new heir. So there was all like this feud of like who would actually be the heir in Spain itself. I think the Dutch were involved for some reason too. I can't remember why. It was just, France was like, so France would have been involved because they were trying to get their guy in. Yes. Yeah. And then Spain was probably like, no. Someone else in Spain, I think, was like, no, let's do, <clears throat> excuse me, let's have someone else in there. I can't remember who that was, though, but. Okay. So it's a war for, like, who's going to be the new king of Spain. Gotcha. Was Spain, I mean, Spain I was think, a world power at this yes, point. Yes, so. it was huge, as was France, because France okay. was, we talked about this before, ruled by Louis the Fourteenth. Yeah, the son he had, king. He had, like, an ego on him, so, like, there were two big world powers at the time okay. feuding over. Not just a throne necessarily, but like power over the, over Europe. So okay, so yeah, so he was involved in the Spanish War of Succession. So if he was okay. born in 1690, 1688, they say between there, then he would have been probably in his early twenties when he joined up. I'd imagine. I mean, yeah, I think the the, the war went on for thirteen thirteen years. years. Yeah. So he probably joined. It doesn't really say when he joined up. At the, not at least I didn't he take note of. At least he wasn't ten. Right. Hopefully, <laughs> or eleven. Um, but, and this is, this is when he turns to pir- piracy after the war ends. And this is, this is for, uh, what we're going to go over now is like four or five years of what this guy's going through. So uh, again, like, uh, I know I keep talking about Henry Avery, but they're both privateers and you, they get a taste yes. of like, you're like, Oh, I can do this. Yeah. And I know what I do this freedom now. that goes into like yeah. a business owner type of thing right. where you're like, I'm going to be in control. I'm in charge. Yeah. You're not literally like monarchy or and I think country have- and just like, you know, you know how to do it. Yeah, and Henry Avery though he didn't really ha- he probably didn't have a life to go back to I don't think like a right yeah, a yeah. career yeah he was 1650s was whenever he was born but, this but guy, like this guy had his family right yeah he could have just went home and probably did nothing yeah. yeah yeah why did he even join up if like he must have been bored so he probably was I mean he went to be an architect he probably was just joining up like towards the end of the war do you uh, do you think he had to like I don't know you have to join. I mean, like, he was an architect like, already, a like, professional at that point. Yeah, but like, those like a like a like a draft kind of thing. I don't know. Probably not. You'd be the one to answer that. Just a weird guy that can't pronounce <laughs> things. All right. <laughs> so this the next thing is gonna be what he's doing in his piracy time when okay. he turns to piracy. This is like four to five years. She's, this is what he go. He, what he does, and this is even not even like the real deep, like a lot of de- details. It goes real in depth. Some of the de- some of the things I've read, it's crazy. But so. In 1716, so after the war's over, he turns to piracy okay. full time. He joins up with a, a pirate named Benjamin Hold, Horngold in 1716. Horngold, that's a great name. This group that he joined up with was a part of a pirate confederation known as the Flying Gang. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Another good pirate name. Oh, that's great. Yeah, which the included a famous gang, parrots, awesome. uh, famous parrots, famous pirates. I mean, they might have had parrots, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Including Edward Teach, he was part of this group, okay. Blackbeard, Samuel Bellamy, Black Sam, they called him. Yeah. And Henry Jennings, and I don't know what that guy is. Mm-hmm. Um, so for a few months in 1716, Samuel Bellamy and Olivier uh, were part of this group, and they were considered the terror of the Caribbean. That's cool. Yeah, they were capturing an estimated, in just a few months, they captured an estimated of 50 ships during this time that they're teamed up together. He's, they're part of the group. 50? 50 ships. That's just awesome. in this time, in the end of 1716. Because in 1717, the Horn Gold Party split up after over about, they were together for over a year. Okay. After the war ends, for about a year or two, they were together, and uh, they split up. So that includes uh, Olivier, Mm-hmm. And Sam Bellamy, they go off together. All right, and so they start teaming up. So what he did at this point is, him and Sam Bellamy still kind of loot stuff around the Caribbean, and then mm-hmm. I guess Sam Bellamy wanted to go north to America into America. Okay, like I guess I don't know. He guess he had family in Maine. Or I don't know whatever the story was. I don't really follow that tale. Yeah, this but, isn't about Sam, right? But he does come back later. I think. Okay. Um, cause it does get kind of crazy. This, again, this is four or five years of this guy just doing crazy stuff. So what, what, uh, our buddy Olivier is doing, he goes south to Brazil and he wants to start taking out stuff in Brazil. So All he right. decides his luck there at the Brazilian coast. He stole a ship, uh, called the La Luisa, Luisa, Louise, Louise. Yeah. La Louise. 
which is a 22 gun merchant frigate. He takes off. So I guess he's just jumping on different ships. He's stealing a lot. Okay, so. He has like all gas, no brakes, man. He's just, yeah, he's, he's just not like, he's just, he's, he's, he doesn't stop. This architect from France. It's <laughs> <laughs> so weird. He was an architect. And he came from like, it sounds like he came from money. Like this, Yeah, know, he was. He was from a rich family. Wow. A successful rich family in, in France. So during his southward journey to Brazil, this is one, uh, one uh, noted thing that happened. He attacked many boats on his way down. And included this one slave ship from Angola. So he basically st- he strands the the uh, the slave ship. He mm-hmm. takes over the slave ship. He takes the people, the crew of the slave ship and strands them on an island after robbing and taking everything. And then he takes all the slaves and he's like, alright, I'm gonna take you. And they're his now. I don't know if he was gonna sell them or something, okay. but basically what happens is he f- sees uh, he's in off uh, he, he's near Rio de Janeiro in Brazil mm-hmm. and he's pursuing or being pursued by a Portuguese armed vessel and he's like I want that ship so he so what he does was he takes these slaves to get rid and he just drops them off on an island he's like you guys are free now <laughs> and just takes off because he wants like he's trying to get away from the ship he's also yeah. so he also wants to like t- take on the ship so he's yeah. like you're too many people I don't want you to kill you that's and, nice you know I don't have time to take you and sell you so I'm gonna just like <laughs> you know set you free <laughs> Your way, also weighing my boat down. So he, uh, after this like battle that goes on with this Portuguese ship, he sought he he sought refuge in a place called um, Canania. Okay, which I'm not saying it's in Brazil. He learned at this time that there was a wealthy French merchantman in the nearby bay of Paraguay. Paraguay, I don't know. Parang- Paranaguea. I don't I, Sorry, everybody. Par- oh. Paraguay? <laughs> yeah. No, it's not that. Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. And so he was like, oh, I'm going to go after them. So he, so he's just basically like, any kind he finds <laughs> out there's like a merchant ship or like money, yeah. support people with money, he goes after them. Huh. He's just like, doesn't want to stop. He wants, I, I, the, like, this is why he, he was one of the Right. You know, I, I wish someone can like, uh, some like psychiatrist or something like that could like identify what it is in, the, in someone like this. He was like having an Avery. This guy seems much more like aggressive. Gunko, like, yeah. Like Avery was just doing it to survive, it sounds right. like. This but guy's like. This guy's like, like I want to. Because if he gave up, like, he could like just a, go home. A mental profile on like how this, what this guy is like. like. Yeah. Like how, what is this like. Thinking is like how he became be this way. Because like. I mean, we see this today. Again, we just talked about Elon Musk. Yeah, I know. But like. Yeah, he also came like, from a rich family. <laughs> yeah. Like I want to win. I want yeah. money. More yeah, money yeah, yeah. means yeah. I win more. Yeah. You know, and probably because it's probably one of those things where like he was. You know, so sheltered as a kid when he got out, he's like, he's like going to college for the first time. He's like, woo, like, <laughs> let's go rob everybody. <laughs> so, what happens is though, he goes after the ship, and in in uh, seventeen eighteen, March of seventeen eighteen, he um, wait, hold on, sorry, really quick, did he get that ship? So he dropped those the guys off, the, the slaves off their island. Did he get that ship? That was this is a Portuguese military ship that yeah. was chasing him. Yeah, yeah, and they were going after him specifically. Yeah. They, he escapes them. He, okay. didn't, he didn't get them, but he, got, he okay. escaped okay. with no okay. damage or anything. Right. So he actually like kind of won because okay. they were going to try to get him. Um, but in seven, March of 1718, he, uh, the, the La Louise sank off of, in a storm off Con, Co, Continga Island, resulting in the loss of 80 of his crew members. He escaped in a small brigantine that accompanies the ship, and uh, he sailed for uh, a place called San uh, Sa, Sa Frank, San Francisco de Sol. Sao Frank, I don't know. Sorry. Wait, San Francisco. It's Sa Francisco okay. de Sol. Yep. Sorry. When he got there in the small brigantine ship, like this is a small ship, you know, probably it's a, an escape ship. Mm-hmm. He uh, seized a boat loaded with flour uh, to feed his crew. So he like what you, eat, eat some flour. He just takes over a merchant ship that's full of flour. And yeah, he's, yeah. he's like, "This is my ship now. Get out of here!" Like he takes his little brigantine and takes over a merchant ship with food on it to feed his crew. Mm-hmm. And I guess like as a captain, you got to I mean, food's just important as money in most cases. Yeah, oh, yeah you don't get a mutiny. But his, his ship that sank apparently had a lot of stuff on like a lot of loot on it. I don't know if he got a lot of that off. I'm not sure. Mm. But um, he returned to Canania 
he decided to venture north uh, in return to the Caribbean of June of 1718 uh, aboard a smaller stolen vessel that he stole at his time <laughs> in <laughs> Canada. It sounds like this guy's like playing Grand Theft Auto. He's yeah, like, he's just doing whatever he wants. <laughs> at this time, he's so he's going back to the Caribbean, but the Caribbean's getting kind of dicey, like for pirates. Like yeah. people are going after. Yeah. So there was a specific ship called the HMS Scarborough, Scarborough, uh, who uh, was going after him, kind of specifically chasing him through the Caribbean, and so he like fled. In a, in a smaller ship that he had, um, but he was weighed down with so much of his valuables. Like he had a, again, it, this the reason I keep saying that he's like, he's jumping ships, he's getting mm. smaller ships, but he's also stealing a lot of stuff. Yeah, where's all that stuff going? And that's what's going to come up with this story. Like he has all, he he's noted, well documented to have a lot of stuff he stole. Like ships that, ships that were like, hey, we got robbed by this dude. So is he just doing this for the for the fun of it? Like he doesn't really care about the money or like the loot. I don't know. Maybe. Um, adventure. Yeah. Uh, this is just a, a whirlwind of fun here. So he finally, in late 1718, Olivier uh, was elected captain of a uh, a ship that was full of his former, from the Flying Gang, the mm-hmm. group that he kind of met back up with. And he was elected there captain got rid of the other captain who was named William Moody and then so he must have been a good leader because like they're people are getting a mutiny to get him back in command I'm also like I'm sure like words getting around what he's been doing too yeah like just again on. 50 ships in, in like a few months yeah yeah there's also maybe there's just so much ships so many ships at this time you know around Caribbean South America yeah and he's also uh, there was stories which I didn't even go into. Like this is just a few few years. There's also he was over in India at some point, and actually he's gonna go and we're gonna see he's gonna go back over to that area. Okay. So in seventeen seventeen nineteen, he realizes that he needs to kind of get away from the Caribbean. He takes off at this time in seventeen eighteen seventeen nineteen. He takes off for Africa, specifically Mozambique. Takes like along his way, he like attacks fortresses. Uh, there was a, it's called the Slaver Porta Odea, Odea, in the Kingdom of Wida, in, in Africa. Okay. Uh, and he like destroyed their Slaver Port fortress. He just like drove by, destroyed it, and kept going. <laughs> That's what the story is. I don't know if he like actually like hung out there and took some money and yeah. stuff, but apparently he just like flew by and was like, "Hey, I'm, I just want to blow this up for no reason." He collaborated with a couple other pirates, so I'm guessing maybe that he was just helping out. Right, okay. Specifically, Hal Davis and Thomas Coughlin, two other pirate captains at the time. And then in 1720, he was shipwrecked in Mozambique, in the ch- at, uh, Mozambique Channel. He found himself stranded on an island <laughs> in the Comoros. He's one, I forgot to mention, like, it's at, during his battles, specifically... Oh, where was it? He got attacked um, and and injured his eye and early in his career. Good. Um, and at this point in 1720, it's gotten like completely dead. It's completely dead. Like it just is. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a common thing throughout his stories. Like he's basically blind in one eye for most of his pirate career, and that's he wears an eye patch. Oh, okay. That's where so it that's came like, from. I I don't know. I didn't see people say specifically that's where that kind of thing of pirates come from. It could have been lots of pirates that had that, but like. I guess he's one of the well-known ones okay. to have an eye patch. It could have been the first, but right. it's probably not known who was the first when it comes to pirates. Because he's the most notable. He's probably he's a, pretty famous for wore pirates. An eye patch. Yeah, and legitimately had to wear one because he was blind in it for most of his his career. So we're in 1720. He's shipwrecked in Am- Mozambique. He's wearing an eye patch, mm. being a pirate. From 1720 onward, he conducted raids from a base on the island of Santa Maria off the coast of Madagascar. <laughs> Along with pirate friends, John Taylor, Jasper Seeger, and Edward England, who I believe was Dutch. <laughs> <laughs> was so, it, he's Dutch? Edward England? I think so. Okay. Yeah. I don't know why they call him Edward England. It's funny. <laughs> you can probably look that up. Maybe but, he's really hated England. Yeah. So this group that he's with now in 1720, Mozambique, or well, he's in 
That's where he wrecked. He is in, again, a ship he had loaded with gold, probably mm-hmm. shipwrecked again. Did he? Where's all this? Like, I want to know where all this guy's loot is. It's with a, gold. Like, what? It's the entire point of the story. Yeah. Come along with me. <laughs> come, come aboard, Captain. <laughs> anyway. Captain, no, Captain. In this time, this group, in a short amount of time, the beginning of 1720, this group together plundered and they were selling stuff to Dutch traders. They're just plundering around this area, selling stuff off. Eventually, uh, Olivier and another pirate, Taylor, <laughs> were, they were dissatisfied how nice Edward England was <sighs> to people because they're like their enemies and stuff. And they even ruined him on an island. <laughs> 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 like this guy, if, you th- if you've ever seen like, the Pirates of the Caribbean movie, this is like, this is what this guy is, except he's not an, al- an aloof weirdo. But he's just like he's just falling he just, backwards he just into like sounds like the epitome of a pirate. Yeah, he's just like, falling backwards the, the, into the, like the ar- the, was it ar- archetype or arch archetype? Yeah, of, archetype. Uh, archetype of of a pirate. Yeah, like that's for what everything he's doing. He's just like he's like I'm gonna just go blow this thing up as yeah. we're going along. Yeah, we're gonna take out the oh you guys need help? We're just gonna yeah. blow this. Yeah. Oh cool, I'll yeah, just, we're gonna going. help you. Oh the ship's coming after him. I'm gonna take it instead. Yeah. You guys get off on this island here. Like yeah, hey guys, get out of here. Yeah, and someone gotta sell you. Get off. Like <laughs> yeah, it, and also in this. I meant to mention this before. If you haven't watched this TV show on HBO called um, Our Flag Means Death. Mm, I've watched watch. it. It's awesome. I, I, I watched the first season. I didn't get to watch Did someone come, come out yet? Yeah, it's out. Okay. But I, I guess it's like in the middle of it, but I, I wanna, I'm going to wait till it's end. Yeah, I'll watch I saw, it. I saw they canceled it. They did? Yeah. Oh, God. It, it was a good show. I liked it a lot. Yeah. I mean, the first season was good. I don't know what the second season Yeah. Um, It probably was. It was too expensive because it was like so, such a, there's so many scenes in different yeah, places. Yeah, and I think they got like some backlash about the way the characters are. Oh, you know, perceived which is and stuff. Stupid. Like, yeah. like who it's cares? a comedy. Yeah, it's a comedy. Who right. cares? Like, right. It's also probably was probably too expensive. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like any period thing, like if it like it would be so expensive. expensive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I really like, um, uh, you know, Taika Waititi's Blackbeard and the other guy, um, the main character. I liked him a lot in. Um, Play the Concords. Never saw it. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know where to go with that. All right. I don't even know what it's about. Everybody was, talks about that show. It was a show, movie. I don't know. What it was only like two, two, two seasons. No. Oh. That's not even enough to get me excited. But like one of the guys is has a big um, part in the show of what we do in the shadows. Yeah, the same kind show. of humor. That's a good show. Yeah. It's great. All right. So they dump Edward England off on an island because he was too nice. Too nice. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's seventeen. That's four or five years. That's seventeen. What did I say? Seventeen sixteen to seventeen twenty. We're at seventeen twenty now. Yeah. At this point in seventeen twenty one, so he's. Still, I'm surprised he's still alive because most pirates like they get like a very small like Henry they say, Avery, he, very small window. They say he probably there was probably hundreds of ships that he had taken over at some point. It plundered. Man. A lot of merchant ships, probably. I'd imagine a lot of, you know, it wasn't like, and he was fighting military. I mean, there's if you look at his like, there's a lot of good research that I found. Specifically, there's this really awesome website, um, CindyValor.com, and uh, she talks about. It's like an older website, but she really talks about like uh, Bellamy and Olivier and like what they were doing, and she really goes into a lot of detail about that stuff. It's really cool. Okay. Um, but it's like an older website. It's like this like website that you know was made. Yeah, mid, late I've, 90s. I've, I've come across some of those. Yeah. Um, all right. So 1721. And this is the big one. This is like what he's known for. This is why he is known as the one of the bigger, more important pirates of history. He's, this is considered one of his, one of the greatest pirate uh, exploits in piracy next to, you know, Henry Avery. Avery, okay. So in 1721... He was involved in the capture of a Portuguese ship, Nosa Senora de Cabo, Our Lady of the Cape. I don't know if I said that right. Sorry, Portuguese mm-hmm, people. Mm-hmm. The ship was loaded full of treasure belonging to the bishops of Goya, also called the Patriarch of the East Indies, which is where they got that name for the book. Okay. And, right. the, and also the Viceroy of Portugal, was this was his ship, who were both on board returning to Lisbon. So the Bishop of Goya, which is a uh, patriarch of the East Indies, so he was mm-hmm. part of the East Indies group, 
and in the Viceroy of Portugal. We were talking about the, the was the man there in mass about like titles like Marquis. Yeah. Viceroy is a good one too. I like yeah. that. Viceroy. Is that that's probably like a military thing, I think. Sounds right. That's a, that's a weird thing. Viceroy. <laughs> that's a weird. Let's see. A lot yeah, like like Marquis and like Duke. I think those are all like dependent on like what country. So they're all they seem kind of the same. I don't know. Okay, so a, a viceroy is a ruler exercising authority in a colony on behalf of a sovereign. Okay. All right. I don't know what any of that means. So I'm glad you understand it. <laughs> All right, back to our boy, Olivier. The pirates were able to board the vessel without firing a single broadside. They didn't have to use any of their guns. Hmm. Uh, because the Cabo had been damaged in a storm. And to avoid capsizing, the crew had dumped 72 cannons overboard. All of their cannons. Jeez. Not the gold or anything. Of course, the, I mean, you don't want to ditch, the, ditch the gold. But, so... They were on. They were anchored off of Reunion Island to undergo repairs, and they couldn't fight back. So uh, Olivier and Taylor pulled up. They give me all your stuff. What are you gonna do about it? The treasure aboard this ship. There was a there was a hundred and twenty carat diamond known as the Great Moogle. Wait, how, how's Moogle spelled? M O G U L. Oh, okay. All right. That's right. Is that right? Did I get that right? Not Moogle. Mogul? Moogle. 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 The Moogle Mo- Empire. Moogle. The Moguls. Moogle. Yeah, Moogle. Moogle. Man, it's, a, it's amazing since we did that episode, how many times like this has been brought up. Moogle and Moogle? Yeah. Like, no, just the Moogle Empire. Like the, oh, yeah. It's yeah, all yeah. full circle. It was a, I guess I like it. this time it was <laughs> a big thing. Um, in the East Indies trading company? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the booty, great, great Mughal diamond, is that what it's called? The, the Great Mughal, great Mughal is the name of the diamond. It also consisted of bars of gold, silver, dozens of boxes of full of golden, uh, the, the golden Ganyas. How's it spelled? Like um, that country. No, oh, Ganya. Ganya? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a, it was a coin, right? Gold coin. That's what they say. It's a okay. gold coin. That was minted in this area, in, okay. in the area. Okay. Uh, diamonds, pearls, silk, art, religious objects from, say, Cathedral de Goya, or in Goya, including the fiery cross of Goya, made of pure gold and inlaid with diamonds, rubies, and emeralds. Hmm. It was pretty, it, it also A lot of good just, stuff. So it was so heavy, this, this cross was so heavy. They required three men to carry it to Olivier's ship. <laughs> <laughs> the treasure was so huge, the pirates did not bother to rob the people aboard because there was so much treasure, they, could, they couldn't do anything about it. Jeez. Because was, they, they couldn't fit anymore. Yeah, yeah. And this specifically is that instance of, uh, that was used in Treasure Island. Oh, uh, okay. This All is right. the ship that was a part of that book for Long John Silver, the Viceroy ever, of the Indies. Did you ever read that? Hell no. I figured, yeah, I haven't either. I saw the uh, cabin boy back back in. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same thing, right? <laughs> yeah. With Chris Elliott. Yeah. David Letterman was rambling in it. I can't remember any of it. Probably wasn't supposed to be watching it. Yeah. I don't remember anything about that. So the loot was divided. <laughs> cabin boy. <laughs> <laughs> Each pirate received at least uh, 50,000 uh, yeah. euros or 50,000 pounds worth of Ganyas. Ganyas? Is that 50,000 pounds in today's? Like 50,000 pounds worth, yes, of today's Okay, I was like, Jesus, back then. As well as 42 diamonds each, and that's all the crew. Wow. Taylor and Olivier split the remaining gold, silver, and other objects with uh, Olivier taking the fire cross of Goya. He got the giant cross, and Taylor got the giant diamond. All right. Imagine 120 carats. A big diamond. Anyway. Yeah, that's a big diamond. Okay, so... 120 carats? Yeah. Is that even like... Is there anything Possible? out there right now that like... like uh, 120 carat... Carat diamond. Like that, I feel like that's like... that's a 120 carat diamond. Unheard of. No, that's not real. I'm just saying like that's an unheard of thing nowadays like to have some like that... Oh, it's not thing. that big. Really? Well, I mean, this is a hundred carat. I mean, that's that's huge. 
Yeah, I mean, it's so for those listening. It looks like an ice cube on some, on some lady's finger. Like a big ice cube. Yeah. I mean, that's a, I mean, can you imagine the cost of something? That's what I'm saying. $22 like, million dollars for 100 k Yeah, I was going to say, like, it's not a common thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of money. In today's money. Um, so, the, uh, so Olivia got the cross. Yeah. Did Taylor got the um, the diamond. Yeah. Captain Taylor got the diamond. diamond. Olivia got the cross. Olivier got the cross. So, I mean, which he should, right? Since he's the one orchestrating this whole thing. I mean, I think it's like a you know pirate. But isn't he like the like the the head captain of this this? Uh... No, I think they're th- these guys were time teamed up. There's okay. multiple ships. Okay. Yeah. So he's like these two are in charge of different ships. But and and also there's other stories about like he was one of the founders of the Libertaria that like, that yeah yeah. But like apparently there's a lot of research that says that that wasn't true, that it was more of like an idea. Like all these pirates got together as like an idea. It was the same with Avery. Like apparently he Yeah, was a founder Libertari- of that. Libertari- yeah, this, yeah, yeah, he yeah. was like Which one is of off the, the coast of Africa, I think. Yeah, Madagascar. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that's just like a common thing, but it was more of like the code, like like pirates are like, Hey look, we're all pirates here, let's be mm-hmm. cool. And I think it was just more of like an idea of like it's all around this yeah. idea of our nation. But unless you're too nice and then you get dumped on an island. Yeah. I wonder what happened to that guy. <laughs> He doesn't come back in this. Is this nope. story? Okay. Mm-mm, all right. Mm-mm. So, and actually, like I said, there's, after this big score, there's not a lot that he's not heard of again. And, and he probably was still doing a lot, but it's not really noted as much as opposed to this. The reason why he gets brought up in history so much and probably is so much written about him is because of this big score. Okay. Because it was such a big deal at the time. Um, and because he was all over the world. I mean, he was like... In, Attacking ships from all over. Caribbean, Brazil. So we jump ahead from, that was 1720, 1721, sorry. We jump ahead to 1724. So, sorry, at this point, has he been doing this for like almost 10 years now, being a pirate? Well, it's noted that, so he started in 1716. Okay. And seven, this is 1724. Okay. But 1721 was like his last big score. He may have been doing smaller things. He was like teaching pirates, you know, like he was like, I retired. Um, you have to wear an eye patch like me, yeah. And he's on switching it, like <laughs> it's, it's itchy on this side, yeah. is that from friends or something? Yeah. Uh, so 1724, Olivier sent a negotiator to the governor of an, on the island of uh, Bourbon, which is present day reunion, to discuss amnesty because this is whenever. Pirates, so the, the French government won a large part of their, wanted to you know, start giving am, amnesty to like, the pirates. And so they were trying to be like, look, stop. I think a lot of the European powers at this point were trying to be like, stop doing this. Just come home. We'll give you amnesty. We won't charge you. But a lot of pirates said, no, hell no. Um, That's a trap. The government, so the French government said, okay, but we want a large part of your treasure back. We want everything you stole back, basically, most of it. Uh, so he said, no, I'm not doing that. And he settled down in, in secret on the Shillelagh's archipelago. Okay. Which I don't even know where that's at. I'm going to look that up because that was, I totally forgot to look that up because I was interested. I mean, I kept, it, imagine it's around, is it's around France? I would think, I think it's, he's still in Madagascar, like that area of, uh, Somali Sea. Oh, okay. So he's still part in, in Africa. Lately, I'm not sure. Yeah, so wouldn't, yeah Ar- archipelago. It wouldn't be around France. Especially I mean, it, it, consisting of 115 I- islands. Okay, hmm. so he's he's down there, and 115 islands is a lot of islands. Yeah, and he's down there ha- hiding out. So they he tried to get amnesty. They said they said give us the loot back, and we'll give you amnesty. He said no, and he was actually uh, captured at that same year um, in Madagascar. So he was captured. Yes, he didn't sail away. Into the sunset, or just disappear like Avery nope. did. Ooh. And this is why. And this is because of what happens. This is why the reason his story is also so big because is is a lot of treasure. There is no way he was able to spend all of it. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. so he was captured um, later that year, and he was taken to Saint Denis, Denis Reunion, which is in in Reunion Islands, mm-hmm. and he was hanged for piracy. On July seventh, seventeen thirty. Dang. So he was—I guess he was kept for a while, obviously a couple of years. Okay. And he was hung. However, when he was hung in seventeen thirty, the story goes. He threw his necklace with the cryptogram into the crowd 
and shouted, find my treasure, the one who may understand it. Okay. <laughs> so, so, <gasps> so, <laughs> the suspense. No, I remember. Okay, so, sorry. I know we keep bringing a hanger, Avery. Go watch, please go watch the that episode. But I remember looking into Henry Avery after that episode that we did about Henry Avery uh, and how he was, just, you know, obviously the biggest score ever. Yeah. And then now pe- some people were like tying him to his legend to, uh, uh, what's the anime? One Piece. The anime yeah. One Piece. This guy's also in This one guy piece. came out with it too because yeah. they're, they're like the whole premise of that uh, show is like he's the greatest pirate ever. My, uh, I had a, got the biggest treasure, or like bounty ever, or uh, booty ever. Uh, someone go find it. Yeah, like, like there's yeah, a the, weird the nine like, piece or one yeah, piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I remember seeing that. I was like, oh, that's he's this, in the, this he's guy. in that show too. Like this is yeah. this guy. All right. Also, you ever try to watch that show? Yeah, it's so old. It's so bad. <laughs> You're just it's, like, oh, it's also like long, so long, it's super long, and there's so many movies and stuff. Yeah. I watched like the first couple episodes. And I'm like. <laughs> there's so much like it's just so old and animated terribly but yeah. I mean that's just how it went I, right yeah yeah but anyway it's still going and they did a live action one yeah the parents are supposed to be good yeah on Netflix I don't know I, I mean I, I maybe I'll it check it out probably not but I will yeah, <laughs> think <laughs> about it I'll skim past it <laughs> I'll think I'll, you know what I'll, I'll think, think you I'll think on it you know I'll think about it yeah I'll think on I'll it I'll at least give it a little bit. you know I'll think about it I'll give it a few minutes a few shakes do. around the old noodle <laughs> Okay, so he shouted again. We're going back to execution. Seventy three threw his necklace into the into the crowd. Said, "Find my treasure, the one who understands it, the one who may understand it." Supposedly, he hid his treasure in a secret location or multiple secret locations, possibly in the Shelley Islands, because he was caught there. He was hanging out there after his big score. Mm-hmm. Man, many people thought that's where he was, or that's where it is. And he left behind this cryptogram with clues. And it's whereabouts. And there's a picture. May I try to? I always say I'm going to put it in the thing, but I always forget. Yeah. And also, it's I don't know. I always forget. It literally, I'm like, I put marks in our timeline when I'm editing this stuff, and like say go back and, and like I even tried using special colors. Actually, I, actually, I, I always I, forget. I was texting you the other day about because I was watching one of the most recent ones we did. I was like, oh, this is a, this point you said you're going to put something up, and I was like, yeah, never mind. Yeah, I don't feel I, like I can. <laughs> I mean, it, it, and then when I remember, it's already it's uh, it's yeah. a pain in the butt to go back. Anyway, Google it, people. There's you can check the links are in the show notes. Yeah. You can go and it, it's all over these these links, especially that again that, that website I mentioned earlier. It's in there. The cryptogram is composed of 17 lines of symbols, letters, and numbers, and geometric shapes. Some of the most notable treasure hunters um, have taken a look at this and have searched for it. I mean, it's been well documented searching. Some of the most notable ones are Reginald Herbert. Cruz Walk Wilkins, who spent 27 years searching for the treasure oh in the Shillelagh's Islands. What's and his son, John Cruz Wilkins, continues even today, looking for the treasure. Do you think that guy's wasted his life savings trying to find this thing? He was a professor. So it's part of his research, I think. So this, this definitely happened? Is it like he definitely was just like, hey, here's this cryptogram? That's part of the theories. Good. Some say it maybe never happened. Some people said it did happen. Maybe he didn't actually do it in that way, that it's just written somewhere. Okay. Because, we'll, I mean, there is records of a cryptogram. Okay. Whether that cryptogram is real, that's a great question. <laughs> All right, let's go and We're going to go to the theories of where his possibly, uh, where his treasure could be. Uh, there, obviously, with all treasure, there's always like, hey, I found this ruby, I found this. Yeah. But, again... The Shillelagh's Islands, Shillelagh's Islands, which we mentioned was 115 different islands. And it's also probably not easy to search any of them. But in the traditional sense of a pirate, did he, did he put it on a little island and put an X on it? I don't know. So here's the theories. There are a few of them, but not many. So the legend of his... The legend of his treasures. Again, where where all his treasures would have gone? He, he he got so much money. It seems like he also ditched a lot of them too. It seems like yeah, when he had a shipwreck, like, yeah, but maybe uh, he hit it like oh, get our crap off of here. The ship's gonna go down. Do you have, like, time, to, do you have time to do that though? Like if you're know. being like chased. But and, like, like the one time pursued? is the uh, Luis was in like they, I guess it was in an 
an area where it was like near next to land. Oh, right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It seems like. Plus, we don't know what he's doing in between. Like, if he just takes over a ship, does he just keep it on board with him, or does he go hide it right away? Maybe he gave like a, a good chunk of it to that guy that was too nice, the England guy. He's like, here, you won't need this on this invent- this <laughs> yeah, island, but we'll come back for you. Make sure yeah. this doesn't get like you know washed yeah, out the like sea. Yeah, like you're protecting us. Uh, so okay, so he, so he says the legend. It's, it's known that the legend requires various tasks representing labors of of Hercules. Uh, and they had to be taken undertaken in strict order to find the treasure. That's cool. I like that. The treasure chamber is somewhere underground and much be a, must be approached carefully to avoid being flooded. It's protected from by the tides, which requires damming to hold them back, and is um, and is to be approached from the north. That's yeah. what they say. The cryptogram tells some of the stuff that's found out. This reminds us, uh, me of uh, uh, we're playing. Uh, was it Sea of Thieves? Yeah. Like those weird, like I think this is where they got a lot. Me, of stuff you were trying like, to like read the book, and <laughs> Jeff yeah. and Herbert are just like running around, like, yeah. Can we get some help here? And he's like, look for certain things in the sky, yeah. and they're like, well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it messes. It seems like these like specific things they're finding out mm-hmm. though relate very weirdly to the Oak Island mystery. Oh wow! All right, because it's like those are the same type of things that were found out about the research about the Oak Island. But anyway. Also, the Oak Island mystery is that water gets into the pit and it's buried in a certain way. And you have to know how to turn off the pit before or the water before you can get to the... Anyway. Hmm. They say, some say, that is buried in a cave on the side of Oak Island in a smaller, uh, a smaller island off the coast of Nova Scotia. Um, and again, this is something that people have been searching for for a long time. And there's a show there. There's yeah. lots of people working there for years. People have they found have, anything there? One of ex presidents used to work there. Yeah, in the show now, quote. I, this I don't, show's been. I feel like show's been on forever. It's like ten years. There's one last. There's one more season. The guys that I work with are like real obsessed with it. But they have found a bunch of stuff. They found like bones from, and it's been. There's some. It's, I, I I don't know if it's fake. You would think that it's fake. It's like a TV show. Yeah. But there's so many like actual professors and people involved with it, and like actual like real things. Mm-hmm. You would think like, why would these people fake it? Unless they're getting paid a lot of money. Yeah. But like their academic thing is like, eh. but, um, money can, you know, yeah. Swayed people. But like, they do find like bones. It could be like staged too. Yeah. Like, it, stuff could be found there, but it could be like staged. They found bones that were dated to like 1600s, even 1400s that were from okay. like Persia and like Europe, like different parts of Europe. Hmm. They found, um, like bones yeah. from like people from, that, that part of the world isn't there like um, a possibly they, like a Templar thing related with Oak? They Oak found Island? a uh, a cross that was supposedly a Templar sim- signature, and they found the same exact shape of the cross in uh, a place where the Templars were held in dungeons. Okay, it was carved into the wall, um, same shape. They found um, a road that's made out of stone, laid the same way that Romans laid roads, hmm. the same style of road. And they went to like Europe and found that like. Uh, but I mean, the road's there unless they put it in the show. Like it's, they found it, and um, they find tons of stuff, like coins from like European. I mean, there's also the Revolutionary War. There's probably people there. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like a crapshoot of stuff. There, are, I mean, who knows? There was there was a show, one of those shows, like this treasure hunting shows, a couple years ago, called um, Mystery of Snake Island or something like that. There's an island. I think I want to say it's. Off, off Africa, but it's called Snake Island, and basically, early people brought a bunch of snakes there, like poisonous, like super poisonous snakes, and they just multiply like crazy because there's nothing there to kill them. Jeez. And so, if you go there, it's like, like one of the most deadly places to go because they're like all these very venomous snakes. They're are, are unchecked by any like and predator. no one wants to go in there. But like apparently, there's before the snakes got let there, there was like secrets of gold and stuff. And eventually, these people like the, through the seasons. I think there's like three seasons. Okay. They actually find gold, really, like real gold, and they find it in waterfalls in Africa. And the, the clues they learned on the Snake Island led them to this. And like it was an actual thing, well documented. Now, unless that was super staged, but it's like I watched it, looked really real. Hmm. They found real gold. I don't know. Snake Island. I never heard of that. Yeah, look it up. Or don't. I don't care. <laughs> Do whatever you want. Yeah. Nothing matters. Go home. Um, 
<laughs> Just get out. So it is hidden. It is, here's another part of this mystery. It is hidden in a tiny circular space. Uh, split of land in Mahone Bay, just west of Oak Island, and the clues related to five flat stones located in the western end of Oak Island. So, more parts of Oak Island. It's located on the island of Mahi, the largest of the Shillelaghs, and is clues. And the clues are based on the story of Jason and the Golden Fleece, hmm. and the astronomical constell- constellations of Greek mythology. So this is kind of like pretty far reaching. Yeah. Uh, it is scattered around various locations around the Indian Ocean, and the clues are related to the landmarks, islands, and ports that uh, Olivier visited during his pirate career. Those are all the different theories. So a few of them are Oak Island or near Oak Island, yeah. which seems kind of easy because Oak Island is a big like treasure hunting lightning rod right now. Yeah, and then the other ones are, and these are these are you know, especially the ones on the Shillelaghs Islands in the Mahi uh, in the Mahi Island and. Um, Scatter on the ocean islands. These are all pretty well um, researched by researchers that could be like, this might be where it's at based on these clues. But, and then the last piece of this, of the theories, is questions the veracity of the cryptogram. Mm. As always, there's always going to be detractors. Yeah. The necklace had been lost. Treasure hunters have since tried to decode the cryptogram, hoping the solution will lead to the treasure based on the records of the cryptogram. So no one knows where their necklace is. Oh, God. <laughs> Convenient. In his 2013 book, Treasure Neverland, Real and Imaginary Pirates, Neil Rainey, or Rennie, says the cipher was first mentioned in the 1934 book, L- Lee Filibuster, Mysterix, Mysterix, History, oh, God. <laughs> Day on Treasurer go. Cash by Charles Daly Redensher. Ooh. So 1930 book about treasures. That's the first time it was mentioned, 1930s. Okay. But I don't know where the actual cryptogram records came from then. If it's, right. you know, who knows. No mention of Olivier's supposed cryptogram, his necklace, or his gallows speech occurs in period uh, sources. Modern historians of piracy regard the legend as a 20th century fiction. Dang. But been really cool. But still, this guy was real. Yes, his exploits were real. Got a lot of loot. Where does all that loot? He had to have hid it somewhere. Being that he was mostly at the end of his career before mm-hmm. he was hung, he was mostly hanging out in one general location. wasn't like a big city. He wasn't go back, and there was no records of him making it back to France or depositing this loot somewhere. He had a lot. They can't even find the fiery cross. Oh, right. They never found that. That has to be hidden somewhere. When, sorry, when he was caught and, and um, hung, was any of the flying gang? Was that the, the f- flying gang? Was no, the, at this point, he was, by, he was off he by himself. himself. A lot of the guys yeah, because he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's hanging alone. That's right. A lot of them may have taken the amnesty approach. Like, right, 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 right. Hmm. So that's the kind of general stories. I want the, the cryptogram necklace thing to be cool, like real. That's awesome. And, and like, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of research or not research. There's a lot of records from this time, like from people who are aboard the ship and like would keep records, you know, mm-hmm. like, and so there, there's some stuff that's kind of in, found by research. Um, there's also a lot more stories about him and his exploits, like his ex- ex- explorations, exploits, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. One specific story about, how Bellamy and uh, Olivier um, like disguised their ships as like merchant ships, and that's how they would like get get close to these merchant ships who would normally just take off as soon as possible, especially if they weren't loaded down too much. Oh, so they just, like attack them? Yeah, he was like just use it to sneak up on them. Okay, they did a lot of stuff like. It seems like they were just having fun out there, like <laughs> playing games. Yeah. It just seems like he's doing it for the joy of it, which I really like. Yeah, and he was maybe, very successful. Yeah, like maybe it seemed like they didn't even really care about the money. Like there's, if he's ditching stuff, but yeah, but again, where would it be? Would he actually like? Did he care? Or was he actually like hiding it somewhere? Yeah. Where was the cross? Where's the cross now? There's, I mean, there's. He also had like so many ships himself. Like, um, seventeen seventeen, he just took a ship called the Dispatch from another pirate group and just took off. It just seems like he's doing it for the sake of just doing it. And also, he's Not just like the, the actual, he's like, like seeing if he can get away with it. Yeah. it's almost like one of those things where like. Bet you I can do this. Yeah, and just the the, the thrill of it. It's like the only way I can feel alive is by yeah stealing, stealing ships. ships. I don't care about care about it, but 
I'm gonna steal. In general, there's a lot of stories about him and where he was and all the stuff that he did. But it is known, there are records of him being uh, where he was generally in this time, like he went oceans he was in. Mm-hmm. And obviously the big scores that he made. But then also there's a lot of, a lot more details of like the little scores he made. Like he seemed to be attacking a lot of ships and taking a little bit from them. Sometimes it was food. A lot of times it wasn't attacking like gold ships. But it seems like there's so many ships being attacked this time. Right. Some of them are food and supplies that maybe he goes and sells, depending on what his team needs or what his group of people need. Um, but there's just so much stuff that this guy did that there's record of. And how he like, there's also stories about him attacking other ships, uh, other pirate ships, like they didn't like. He just took their like, stuff like that. And sometimes he <laughs> didn't wasn't successful, but he still lived. It's, he, just, he wanted a challenge. He just won the party. Yeah. Yeah. So that is Olivier Lovasseur, the pirate do, uh, from do you, France. Do you think he like, stashed any of this stuff? So that's what I'm going to get to next. Do you okay. think he stashed anything? Do you think he actually did this traditional like movie star where they dug it and put it down. <laughs> the and... X marks the spot. Yeah. I don't think he did. He just strikes me as someone who's just like, I don't care. Like, like the chase, the chase of it or the idea of it. I think he liked, but like that wasn't like the, the actual keeping the gold or like whatever he got. I don't think actually interested him. I think he just wanted to do it for the sake of doing it. Okay. That's what it seems like. Cause again, like you're saying, he went by that one port and just like, I'll just blow this up right now. Yeah, when he attacked that fort for yeah. that with a group of other people. Right. It just didn't seem like, I don't know. I think. Like it seems like a spontaneous guy. He didn't really need the money, too, maybe. Right. You know, or maybe. He, I don't know. It seems like he was still taking care of. Like, if he's going to be a pirate captain, he has to take care of his boys. Sure, yeah. I mean, like you said, he, like, he, he was a flower ship. He, he took over a merchant ship. And yeah. Because like, I got to feed my need, guys. After yeah. his one ship got destroyed. Right. He's like, I'm going to take over the ship and, like, free these guys over here. So, I think, I think he, like you said, I th- I think he probably did have a lot of loot. Maybe he hid some of it. He had to hide some of it. Yeah, I mean, some of it, because he's, you know. But 115 islands, there's a lot of space. But I don't, I don't know what kind of islands they are. They could have been washed out into the ocean, too. True, yeah, yeah. Um... Maybe he did hide it. There's not a lot of records from 1724 to 1730. We don't know what's really going on there. Okay. So maybe his men went and got the, and took it and split it up. Yeah. I like a good pirate story. Maybe one day we could find this pirate treasure. But it seems like there's not, a, like, again, a guy wouldn't look for it for 27 years. He would have found something. His son's still looking for it. <laughs> 27 years. That's too much time to look yeah, for something. That's like. He can't even look for something 27 seconds. I give up. I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'll buy a new one. <laughs> or I don't need that thing. Yes, yeah, that's, that's dedication or like an obsession. Like at some point you're just like, well, I can't stop now. Yeah, I keep looking. I don't want to look like a fool. If You think you'd ever find pirate treasure? It seems like all the pirate treasure stories are always fake. Does anybody ever find pirate treasure? Didn't they just find, just found some a year, a couple of years ago? Where at? I think I want to say it was like a, it was, a, it was like a, they found a Spanish ship. Oh, Galleon. Galleon, yeah. yeah there was a show, again, think, going back to TV shows. There was a show on, I think they're always finding those, but. I don't know if they're pirate ships right. or not. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, um, there was a show on Discovery. There was only one season, maybe two, and it was basically an astronaut that was early manned space flight that early before we had like space station stuff, there would, instead of putting satellites up to take pictures of the ground, especially during the Cold War, they put people up there and they would actually use cameras to take pictures of stuff as it went by. So there was actually people up there they would go up and get and bring back down. Wait, up where? In space. In like manned satellites, basically. Okay. There was these things floating around the earth that would, 
instead of having a, a, you know an automatic and it was only for a few months i think because then eventually they figured out how to put a, an automatic one up there okay and transmit the, but they had to have people go up there take pictures and bring those pictures back Is that, wait really yeah that's a thing yes all right it's cold war it might have been like the 50s 60s something there so it must have been, it had to be after the 60s right no that's when we went to the moon so it had to be in the 60s okay. during the cold war yeah they had satellites in space like spy satellites that were for taking pictures of russia and but they had to have people do it because there wasn't automatic cameras yet. So they had to have go up there, take it with cam- film, bring the film back, and develop it. Okay. I think there was even a way to send the film back without people and or something. I don't remember. Hmm. There, there was a lot of details are fuzzy, but there was a show Discovery made about this astronaut or person who worked in one of these things, and he's like a well-known one. He took pictures of the ocean when he fly over the Caribbean. Yeah. And he found a bunch of ships that way. And oh, he had, wow. he had a basically built a map and suppose, and like a lot of the times in this map, you know, you could see pretty deep. They would check out to be like real pirate ships. Oh, that's cool. Or like real gold. Um, and the show is kind of dramatized. It's kind of stupid, but it's about this guy who's like, I knew this person, this, this astronaut, he gave me the maps. Some of the maps are ripped or something, blah, blah, blah. blah. I and mean, he basically goes and like looks for it and like tries to get money to go find it. And, and then it got canceled for some reason. I don't know. I don't know if you Wait, is this like a reality thing or is it actually yeah. like, oh, okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. I just saw um, that apparently this um, group discovered uh, Amelia Earhart's plane underwater. And they say that every few years. Yeah. But I guess uh, this is like, seems pretty promising. Yeah, it's some underwater underwater drone that found <laughs> might have found it. They'd already been out for like I don't know months. So they have to go back, but of course yeah. the ocean. It seems like it might have been the place where or any other plane. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, any of the other hundreds of planes that probably they, crashed. Didn't they come a couple of years ago? They came out these pictures and they were like, "Oh, look, this is Amelia Earhart. She's hanging out with this guy, and this is taken in 1970." Uh, yeah, I've seen all kinds of stuff like that. But... Like there's like a pretty big ordeal, and then people are like, "No, that's not her." And he's like, yeah, it is. Look. Um, yeah, this is like the newest of these. But that may be something, man. Really, it's not too far from where they lost contact with her over the radio. So, Why are the people so obsessed with her? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that went missing <laughs> yeah. around the world. <laughs> like, why is yeah, she the one? I think she's like the, you know, the first. Yeah, so they were, so these satellites were called the Corona s- uh, program strategic satellites produced and operated by the CIA and the director of science and technology uh, satellites were used for photographic surveillance of the Soviet Union China and other areas being beginning in 1959 hmm. um, I've heard of this yeah it's part of so like they actually dropped the things down I'm like it's, it's, it's fake it's fake um, they actually dropped like you can see like a plane here picking up the thing as it came back re-entry hmm. yeah and it was just they put a person up there see this that's, guy. that's wild yep keyhole was it <laughs> KH1 KH2 yeah so. but again it was because they were they didn't have the ability to take pictures yet spy stuff all right <clears throat> Our buddy Oliver, no, Olivier, Olivier, sorry, he was hanging out around the Shillelagh's Islands, mm-hmm. may have buried some of his gold. I would love to find some. Yeah. If anybody knew where it was. Do you think he actually buried some of it? Yeah, he had to have. Well, the pirates actually were known to bury gold. I don't, that's the thing I don't know. I, was, I guess I didn't I really thought, thought the, about that. There were, but like, am I just basing it off of like movies and like cartoons, like with yeah. a map and like X marks a spot and like. I just feel like this guy wasn't in it for that. I think he's just in it for the thrill of it. To see what he Do can you get think away any with. pirates hid their gold? I'm sure, someone had to have. Not necessarily like, you know, in a sand on an island, but. I mean, it might have been they, they hid it there for a while while well, they were fixing their ship yeah, or I'll something. I'll come back for it kind yeah. of thing. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. No, sorry, like, you know, again, I'm sure a bunch of them hit it, but like, not, I think, 
the way we think they did. Like, right. You know. Or they, someone went back and got it. Yeah. At the, yeah. You know, t- 10 years, even if it was 10, 20 years later. Right. Someone on that crew was like, hey, man, yeah, you got to go back to this yeah, island. Yeah, someone's going to, someone on the crew is like, knows where it's at. It's going to go get it. Or there's like, I just stashed it, like, in a, you know, a safe house or something like that. Or in a cave. Why would yeah. you dig it? You know? Right. Why would you, I guess the kind of physics or whatever of like burying a heavy object in sand might not be good. So, I mean, but also I'm thinking like, the movie version of a deserted island. It's probably like yeah, they put yeah, it in yeah. a cave and dug it or something. Right. There's a lot of islands out there. All right. Another one down, another one. Unsolved. Unsolved. <laughs> Maybe made it worse like we always do. But thank you for being here, Jordan. Yeah, I like I like this guy, man. I like his uh, his style. His swagger. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a pretty cool, cool pirate. <laughs> and... I think the next pirate we will do will probably be the same story. Pirate <laughs> treasure, and we don't know where the hell it is. Do you have a Do you have a pirate nickname? Oh man, um, iron, iron pants. Wasn't that something new? You didn't you use iron pants on something before? Yeah, sticky iron pants or something. Some <laughs> can't remember. <laughs> um, I don't know. Baby blue eyes or something. <laughs> <laughs> Baby face. <laughs> baby, baby face. Baby face. Baby face. Oh, baby face. The baby face kid. They're like, oh, Captain Baby face. No one's going to listen to me. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I mean, I think you have to, you think your pirates give themselves their names? No, I think they're, I think they're given by like, uh, that crew or something. The crew are like, the people that, or like people hunting them. Yeah. Blackbeard. I think you'd probably want to give your name Blackbeard. Like if you said my name is Blackbeard, you'd be like, whoa. Yeah. Taser face. Yeah, taser face. <laughs> stink beard. He's so here. Oh no. Stink beard. I don't know. Um mm. Big Boy. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, probably sticky fingers, or something weird like that. <laughs> sticky bandits, yeah. Sticky pirates. What would your ship be called? That I think that'd be a, that. That's more interesting. I think your ship. Yeah. Um, I guess like you, you don't really get to name it if you're stealing it. <laughs> I mean, you could, yeah. Just, well, I mean, you re- can, rename it. Yeah. You think to put someone down and paint over it? It's a paint. <laughs> it's a whole thing. I don't know if I would name my boat something. Especially back then, like not a boat or something, or like <laughs> this is this is just call it not a pirate ship. <laughs> <laughs> this is not a pirate ship. Nope. Look the other way, look, please. Look the other way, please. <laughs> yeah, no gold here. <laughs> yeah, don't shoot us. <laughs> um, or like the king is rad. So people are like, oh, he likes the king. Cool. Let's <laughs> yeah. not take him over. Long live the king. Yeah. All They're right. Like, wait, which king? I'm like yours. Whatever one you like. What's your name, ship? Oh, uh, the English king. <laughs> yes, HMS yes. what? Okay, yeah. Yeah, that guy, that guy. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. All right, Jordan. All right. Again, we're out of here. Thank you for being here, everybody. Please, please, if you liked what you heard or you saw, give us a follow, give us a subscribe, whatever service you're on. Give us a follow on any social media if you want to keep in touch. If you have idea for episodes, we'd love to hear it. You can uh, find the links in the show notes below. You can give us an email uh, if you'd rather instead of social media at mysteriouspalsonline at gmail.com. All of these links are in our website or at our website at mysteriouspals.com. It's the easiest way to get to us. Um, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff's on. We got that at Mysterious Pals. Twitter is at mysterious underscore pals, but probably after Elon Musk listens to this episode, he deletes <laughs> our account. <laughs> um, either way, we're happy you're here. We're happy you stayed, yeah, if you did you. stay. And and we will have some fun then. Jordan, <laughs> thanks for being here. <laughs> Thank you. Stay mysterious, everybody. Bye. Live long and pirate on. <laughs> 